In the last episode of Right in Front, we witnessed the onset of the great rationalization, and with it, the fall of common sense. The evil ambassador Secularis consolidated enough power to become president of the world and set his plans for rational thought extremism into motion. Already, lives are being transformed. Brooke, believing her boyfriend was lost to the slow rapture, has sought comfort in the common sense underground. But not all chose the right path. Officer Lawson, revealed to be an agent of the secular slumber, turned on his own partner for his belief in common sense. And what will become of Julia, whose family left her behind after she turned to the dark path of rational thought? But there are still even more pressing matters at hand. The believers of common sense cry out for the return of Dr. Pie as a whooping coffee pandemic poisons the world's coffee supply. And from space, a nuclear missile of unknown origin is hurtling towards Earth. And as the media plays a guessing game, President Secularis meets with his committee to discuss solutions to the impending cosmic collision. All right, all right, gentlemen. These are very good ideas here. I, I know we haven't really found the best one yet, but I do feel we are making progress. I'm going to have my assistant read back some of the current favorites. Okay, England suggested building a giant shield in space to deflect the object. Russia suggested building a dome around the entire planet. Domes are good and strong. America suggested building a wall just around America. Oh, bloody hell. Again with the fucking walls. We also have move the earth out of the way. France, thank you. <laughs> and Avex the object came from Germany. Pretty sure we're trying to avoid that scenario. Uh, excuse me. The committee recognizes the member from Canada. This is getting us nowhere. These are ridiculous solutions that a cartoon writer would come up with. With respect, you need to understand this is part of the creative process. We are brainstorming ideas here. Yeah, there are no wrong or ridiculous ideas at this stage in the process. It's all about stream of consciousness. Sweden wants to build a time machine. Yeah, and we think our scientists are getting very close to building one. With what? Cheap wood and, and a crooked screwdriver? Or, or were you hoping maybe Denmark would send you some tiny plastic bricks? <laughs> <laughs> I am suggesting we just step back a minute. Has anyone substantiated the claims regarding this object hurtling towards Earth? Do you doubt? The existence of impending doom? With all due respect, Mr. President, some say it's a nuclear missile from space sent by who? Some say it's a comment. How big is it? How much time do we have? What, what do we know for sure about this? Who can tell you what we know for sure, Boyle? We know it's coming right towards us, and that's all we need to know. I'm suggesting it would be wise to confirm what we are dealing with. Right now, we are just rationalizing solutions for, for a problem we don't know anything about. Well, that sounds like common sense talk to me. You're not a common sensor, are you? just saying. We need to think things through clearly. We need a solution now, even if we don't understand the question. And you can put that down in your little notebook. Yes, about that. You have notebook, but you have not been taking notes. Something does not add up. Take it from him. Hey, 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 that's mine. It's a copy of Source of the Word. Take him over. Seize him. He's not with us. You dare him up. to bring that book into this committee? It's not mine, I swear. The pages were blank, so I, I just thought it was a notebook. Someone must have switched it. Liar! These matters are too significant to let a follower of Dr. Pie muddy the waters with common sense heresy. God, we have a free one for in progress on the committee floor. Take this man away. I will deal with him later. Throw the traitor out! I swear to God, I will no, kill no, that no. lying bastard Please, myself. President Secularis, please. It, it was an honest mistake. 
All right, settle down, sir. Relax. We're just going to get you the help you need so you can start thinking rationally again. No, no, no! I, I will! I will not end up as one of your mind control experiments! Soon you will come to see the re-rationalization process isn't an experiment. It's a cure. A cure for the common sense that afflicts you. Long live common sense! Long live Dr. Pi! Sir, put down the acorn. Let's talk about this rationally. There's nothing to talk about. You will never rationalize me. Well? <laughs> He's dead, uh, President Secularis. Cyanide acorn. And, and there's something else. What? He has a mark on his arm. Yes. It means he was a member of Dr. Pi's personal common sense enforcement force. The Circle of the Seventh Sense. A spy. Yes. <laughs> and a good one, too. He should never have made it this far. And so, another fanatic takes his own life in the name of a failed philosophy and a false prophet. This is where the path of common sense leads you, my friends. Well, uh, now may be a good time to break for lunch. There's a rather tasty buffet in the other room. We'll pick up where we left off later. Agolite, take some notes. I have an immediate press release to be issued. After a security breach in the committee meeting today, President Secularis has announced some emergency measures designed to keep the world safer. To further slow the spread of militant common sense extremism, President Secularis has passed a law banning all citizens from possessing a copy of Source of the Word. Since Source of the Word is simply a book with blank pages, the order extends to all blank books. This includes notebooks, journals, and sketchbooks. Lawbreakers will be fined, imprisoned, or possibly face assignment to a re-rationalization facility. The only way such a book, without words, is considered legal is if it bears the mark of secular on each page so that the book is not fully blank. In order to help law-abiding citizens to comply with the ban, book collection and burning stations will be set up at all law enforcement agencies across the globe. Compliance will be facilitated by an international door-to-door -door census of books organized by local governments. This will include discretionary, warrantless search and seizures. All hail President Secularis. Elsewhere in Haventown, Georgie and his father wander the sacred forest of awakening, hoping to find clues to the whereabouts of Dr. Pye. Their only lead is a rumor that Keeper of the Word, Mr. K, still roams the woods, also waiting. Daddy, where are we? We've been in the Forest of Awakening for days. We're lost, and I'm hungry. We are where we need to be right now, son. Where Dr. Pai was last seen. Do you actually think he's still here? No, but I believe Mr. K is somewhere. So common sense says to find Dr. Pai, we must first find Mr. K. Well, that makes sense, I guess. <gasps> Look, Georgie. There in the clearing, a gold-plated tree stump. It's beautiful. There's a plaque with some writing. Let those who are without slumber awaken. Stop where you are. What business have you with the golden stump? Do you come to slumber or to awaken? We come to awaken. Good. Very good. The last people said slumber and... Well, that got messy. We believe he knows how to find Dr. Pi, the one true speaker of the word and the avatar of common sense. He may, but first you must prove yourself worthy. Do you know the significance of this golden tree stump? Yeah, I do. It's where the revealer of the word first appeared. Once Dr. Pi himself 
was lost in these woods just as you are now. Starving and near death, he wandered into this clearing and passed out. Tell me, child, do you know what happened next? That's when the squirrel appeared to him. Yes, the revealer of the word appeared and gave Dr. Pye a choice. He was presented with two golden tablets. One had a bag of fresh and tasty acorns. On the other tablet was a bag of magical golden acorns. Which did he choose? Well, if he was starving, he could eat the fresh and tasty acorns to survive. But with magical golden acorns, he would be rich forever, and he could buy all the food he ever wanted. Such was Dr. Pye's dilemma. And so the squirrel asked him, what does common sense say? It's simple, Daddy. Common sense says there's no such thing as magical golden acorns. Of course. Had he rationalized wealth over survival, he would have chosen a lie and ended up with nothing. Yes, Dr. Pye sensibly chose the anointed fresh and tasty acorns. This choice is known as the first awakening. And, and what of the squirrel? He vanished, leaving only the bag of fresh and tasty acorns. With those, Dr. Pye survived long enough for me to find him and bring him back to civilization. Then common sense says you are Mr. K. Yes, I am the keeper of the word. We have so many questions. What's that noise? Come, it's not safe here in the open. President Secularis has surveillance drones sweeping the area. Indeed, it is not safe for Mr. K and his new friends. For elsewhere, enemies conspire against them. Even now in his lab, Professor Abominus and Georgie's mother have plans of their own. There, the signal has stopped in the Forest of Awakening. See, I told you. Yes, yes you did. President Seculoris will be pleased. But why there? What does my drone see? That's it. That's the golden tree stump. And, and Georgie's squirrel doll is there. Ah, yes. It's dawn of the Anointed Awakening's holy site. They must have drawn Mr. K out of hiding. <laughs> they can't be far now. Then let's get them. Patience, Julia. We need to observe their next move. What is their goal? Whom will they reach out to next? Too many questions. I can't think. Always too many questions. I can help you with the questions, Julia. You can make the questions stop? You have answers? No. Not exactly, but I can make you stop caring about the answers. How? Tell me, Julia, have you ever tried heroin? Heroin? But, but Dr. Pye says that drugs are bad. Well, Dr. Pye has a very narrow world view. Drugs are only bad if they are used irresponsibly and you seem very responsible. I do? Of course you do. Your only concern right now seems to be getting your son back. And that is responsible. Yes. Yes, it is. Besides, Dr. Pye drinks coffee, which has caffeine, which is a drug. You're right. Caffeine is a drug. And... He encourages his followers to drink coffee, to become literally awakened. He does. They're all coffee fiends. Who is he to decide which drugs are good and which are bad? What a hypocrite. Yes. Yes, he is. I never thought of it that way until you said that just now. You are clever. You have a great 
untapped wisdom within you. No one understands me. And if you calm down, you could think more clearly all the time. Just imagine the wise thoughts you would think. Well, that seems rational. Of course it does. And you want to be at your best when we find your son, Georgie. You want to show him what a good parent you are. Well, if it makes me a better parent... Good. In fact, it's your lucky day. I just happen to have some heroin in my pocket. I am finally taking control of my life. Good for you, Julia. Good for you. (laughs) Where are we going? Over here. My tent is hidden in the trees. We'll stay here until the danger passes. So this is where you live? This tent? I move the tent daily to avoid getting caught by the rationalization forces. I have survived on acorn preserves and cold instant coffee. Cold coffee? A fire would draw attention to me. Besides, coffee doesn't need to be hot to be coffee. It just needs to be coffee. But where do you keep all of your acorns and coffee? We have hidden stockpiles of instant coffee and food all over Haventown. Only Dr. Pye and myself know where they are. Why did you do that? Years ago, Dr. Pye foretold something like the great rationalization would happen if someone communed with the entity we call Secular the Slumberer, and they consolidated enough power of rational thought. Like a prophecy? My dad says there's no such thing as a prophecy. That's right, son. Just really good guesses. But Dr. Pi's level of awakening is 3.14, so his ability to guess is the most powerful I have ever seen. Mr. K, has the revealer of the word, the talking squirrel, ever appeared to you? The revealer of the word has appeared to me, but not in the same way he did to Dr. Pi. To some people, he appears as a mist, a flaming shrubbery, or a weeping statue. To me, he reveals himself in acts of common sense that manifest every day in seekers of the word, like you, Georgie. Oh, like a metaphor. That's not what I said. The child is not yet ready. He is dangerously ignorant of our ways. You have much work to do as a father, sir. I... I understand, Keeper of the Word. It was his mother. She stunted his awakening by questioning Dr. Pai and the path of common sense. And where is the mother now? Left behind. In the ruins of the compound. My mother is now a slave to the rational mind, just like the succubus whores of Secular the Slumberer in his Cave of Lies. You know, like in my bedtime stories. Well said, Georgie. You show promise. Do you know how to find Dr. Pie? The world needs common sense more than ever. I don't know where he is, but I know where to start the search. We must travel to the east of the Forest of Awakening, towards the traditional lands of the Carnival people. It is rumored that Dr. Pie was last seen there, communing with their tribe. Are you sure? The Carnival people will help us. The Carnival tribe is loyal to Dr. Pie. That much I am certain of. Where is he? Where is my arch nemesis? Your arch-nemesis? Dr. Pi. Who else? Uh, oh! Uh, all my spies are working on it, sir. You said your spies would find him. Yet, after weeks of searching, they have come to me with nothing. They're doing their best, I promise. Are you sure he's even still out there? Maybe he gave up. Maybe he's dead. Well, then find the body. Why does it matter? He's defeated. You won. 
He's not causing any trouble, even if he is alive. It doesn't matter if he's dead, if I cannot prove that he is dead. As long as his followers believe he is alive, he is a threat. Because if they believe he is alive, they still have hope. Hope? Yes, hope. Hope is a dangerous thing. Hope can lead people to make bad choices, like rising up against a dictator. The great rationalization is at risk as long as the followers of common sense have hope. So hope must be extinguished. We will find him. Look, he here are some of my spies now. <sighs> and what do you have to report? Um, well, this is more of a check-in than a report. I I'm sorry, a, a check-in? Yeah, um, I have nothing to report. But I, I thought you'd still like to know that, you know, just to stay in the loop. There. Now I'm in the loop. And, and you, what do you have to say? You shot him in the head? Yes. Yes, I did. And what do you have to report? Um, yeah. We, um, we think he may be in Haventown. Um, uh, he has a home there. Um, had yeah. a home? We burned it down last week. What good is a spy who doesn't even know what's going on in his own organization? Uh, are you going to shoot me in the head, too? No, no, no. At least you tried to give me an answer. I mean, I can't just go around shooting all of my employees in the head. Who? <sighs> Your knees, however, are another matter altogether. Oh! Aha! There. I suppose we'll have to find you a desk job for oh. the next few months. Oh. Oh. Now crawl oh. out of my sight. Um, those were my best two spies. Thankfully, I don't have to rely on your incompetent excuses for spies. I have one of my own. Isn't that right, my dear Julia? Yes, great Secularis. Any updates on your family? The tracking chip in Georgie's squirrel doll stopped moving in the Forest of Awakening. Yes, I know the spot. There. My drone's camera found it. His toy was left on the sacred golden tree stump. He must have forgotten it there, and left it behind. Just like they left me behind. Now we won't be able to track him. I'm sorry I failed you. Not at all. You've helped a great deal. You did right coming to me to tell me of your husband's plans. No doubt by now, they have found Kay. I know what their next move will be. When? When we find him, you promised to get my son help. Don't worry, miss. The boy will be sent to join the Rational Youth Brigade. After he is reconditioned, of course. I could arrange a similar opportunity for your husband Winston, if you'd like. Don't bother. He made his choice. He's dead to me. Good. <laughs> I could still have use for him in the behavior labs. Yes, I'm sure you could. No doubt Kay and your family are on their way to meet with the carnival people to seek their assistance. Dirty, filthy carnies. Indeed. Professor, <laughs> take a task force with you to Haventown, to the carnival and wait for our enemies to gather. Then, grab the boy and whomever else may amuse you for your experiments. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Seculorus. Thank you. And kill the rest. You have been listening to Right in Front, Episode 2. The Forest of Awakening. Right in Front is a presentation of Source of the Word Playhouse and was recorded at WAKN Studios on the Dawn of the Anointed Awakening compound. The cast featured Dr. Pi and Mr. K as themselves and the Haventown Repertory Troupe, performed by Earl Townsend. The soundtrack was composed by Dr. Pi and the Awakened and is available on Pi Tell Records and Tapes. Right in Front. Right in front.